Well, hello there, boys and girls, and welcome. It is I, Makoto-chan, once again. Now, Battlefield 5 has finally been released after many controversies and even delays. The general consensus of the game by players who have played it seem to be uh, good, but the biggest problem for Battlefield 5 currently may be the lack of content. Now, this is said to be amended thanks to the Tides of War program, but how much and how long remains to be seen. As the war will be progressing uh, chronologically, uh, here's my wish list for a Soviet faction in Battlefield 5. Now this will be an extensive video, so please sit back and enjoy. Now first, for the Assault class, uh, an addition of Assault Rifles and Semi-Automatic Rifles can be added along with various anti-vehicle gadgets. Now the Soviet Union had many prototype Assault Rifles from World War II, which I think uh, were quite interesting. So the first one is the Sudayev AS-44. The Sudayev AS-44 was one of the prototype Soviet assault rifles from World War II. Uh, the creator Alexei Sudayev also created the famous PPS submachine gun. Now the prototype was tested in 1944 and was adequate for use by the Soviet army. However, the weapon was heavy at almost 5.6 kilos. Now a lighter prototype was created, which was 5.35 kilos. However, it suffered accuracy and reliability problems. Uh, Sudayev never got the chance to improve his design as he became ill and died in 1946. The weapon could hold 30 rounds. Now, number two is a weapon we know about, and it's the Fedorov Aftermat M1916, which appeared in Battlefield 1. And was it a Russian automatic rifle, which was designed by Vladimir Fedorov in 1915? Now, the weapon could hold 25 rounds and almost 642,000 were produced. The weapon actually saw combat in World War I, the Russian Revolution, and the Winter War. So it sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, deserves to be in, uh, in the game, and it's probably easier for DICE as well. Now, number three is the uh, Spagin 1944. Now, this is another experimental Soviet assault rifle designed by uh, Georgi Spagin, who also designed the famous PPSH-41 SMG that everyone knows about. However, the weapon was difficult to control while firing and eventually dropped. It could hold 30 rounds. Now, at number 4, we have the Tokairov Model 1944. Now, this was created by Fedor Tokairov, who also made the Tokairov pistol, T uh, which is pretty famous, and the SVT uh, 38s and 40 semi-automatic rifles. Now this weapon was fully automatic, could hold 30 rounds. However, the weapon once again failed tests and further development never occurred. Now number five, we have the AVS-30. Now this was a Soviet automatic rifle uh, which was capable of single and full automatic fire and appeared to have been one of the earliest types of weapons who, which could do this. Now, it was adopted in 1936, and the weapon saw combat through the Winter War and World War II, uh, but was eventually replaced by the SVT-38 and 40 uh, due to numerous issues. Now, at number 6, we have the Bulkin Model 1944. Now, the Bulkin Model 1944 is another obscure Soviet assault rifle. There's very little to no information only that it can hold 30 rounds and the weapon looks similar to an LMG rather than a assault rifle. And number 7 we have the TKB-408 Korobov. The Korobov was an experimental Soviet bullpup assault rifle. The 1945 version is a little different from the 1946 version. The 1946 version was never ev adopted, eventually being beaten by uh, the Kalashnikov rifle. It could hold 30 rounds. And at number 8 we have the Pirolutsky M1944. I could hardly find any information about this, only that it's a Soviet experimental bullpup assault rifle. Now, of course, um, not all of these things could be added, I think. But I think it's a sort of a good idea to give dice, you know? It's like what possibilities there are if they're looking to add weapons for the Soviet faction. Now we'll look at the semi-automatic rifles. Uh, similar to Germany and the United States, the Soviet Union also employed semi-automatic rifles. 
uh, number one we have the SVT-38 and SVT-40. Now this was a Soviet semi-automatic rifle which saw extensive use across World War II as well as other conflicts. And more than a million were made and was intended to be the primary rifle for the Soviet army uh, but this never happened due to the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Now an automatic variant called the AVT-40 also existed. Uh, it, hold t it, ha it held a 10 round detachable box magazine and I think many of you may have heard of this weapon. Now number two is the SKS. Now the SKS is widely popular and well-known semi-automatic rifle uh, from the Soviet Union and was also used extensively by countries under uh, the Soviet sphere of influence like I think Vietnam and China and North Korea. Now the rifle itself was actually designed in 1943 and did see limited combat in the front lines of war in the front lines of World War II during 1945. So, I mean, uh, dice can add this weapon. Now at number three we have a very obscure weapon called the main model one, two and three. A very rare Soviet prototype like carbine from 1942. It could apparently hold 10 to 30 rounds. Other than that it's a, it's a very obscure weapon. Now for the assault classes uh, anti-tank gadgets. Uh, here are some possibilities for the Soviet faction. Now, number one, we have the RPG-1. Not the RPG-7, but the RPG-1, which was a prototype Soviet rocket launcher created in 1944. Now, basically, the Soviets saw uh, the effectiveness of the American bazooka and the German Panzerfausts, and they wanted to combine the best features of the bazooka and the German Panzerfaust to create their own weapon. Now, however, the weapon ran into various problems and was abandoned for the RPG-2, which had a far superior design and was adopted for use after the war. Now, this used a 30 or 70 millimeter rocket and could penetrate 150 millimeters of armor. Now, at number two, we have anti-tank grenades, also known as the RPG-40, 41, 43, and 6. Now, Dice could add any of these. I don't really mind. But I think the RPG-43 will be the best. The RPG-40 and 43 were both widely used by Soviet troops during World War II. Now this weapon is very dangerous because you have to get close to tanks so they could be thrown. Uh, however, of course, uh, they had no sound or any smoke. So the position of the person it was unlikely to be found, unlike using a rocket launcher. Now the RPG-40 was more effective against early German tanks like the Panzer I and Panzer II, while the RPG-43 was designed to fight against later German tank models. So adding this would be, I think, a normal thing to do, and I think DICE should do it. Now at number 3, we have the PTRS-41 and the PTRD-41 Soviet anti-tank rifles. Now. These, this, uh, this is one of the most famous weapons the Soviets used, I guess, uh, which could be found in games like Call of Duty World War, War uh, Red Orchestra 2, and basically there, there were anti-tank rifles which the Soviet troops used at the early stages of the war. Now the only difference is that the PTRS was a semi-automatic weapon while the PTRD was a single-shot weapon. So I think adopting either one for Battlefield 5 would be a very good idea. Now for the support class, uh, there isn't much of an option for the Soviet Union, uh, but it's pretty obvious. Uh, the DP-28, a very famous Soviet light machine gun, which has this sort of like a, uh, uh, like a, like a circle <laughs> drum or something, which is put on the top and I think could hold maybe 50 or 70 rounds. This was basically the main LMG used by the Soviet Union. Now as for gadgets, um, I think that uh, they could, DICE could possibly add a Soviet anti-tank mine. For example, the TM-35 mine, uh, which has this sort of <laughs> square shape. So, you know, you know, at least it looks a bit different from the anti-tank mines that we already have in-game. So, 
yeah, I don't know. They, they could possibly add it. Now, finally, we move on to the Scout class. Now, there isn't much of an option here as well. But we have the Mosin Nagant M1891, uh, which we found in Battlefield 1. And, and uh, you could use that weapon. So, bringing this over should be very easy. And we have something to play with. Now, there's also the Mosin Nagant M1938 carbine and the M1944 carbine. Uh, they're effectively really the same. They use the same cartridge. Uh, they both have five round magazines. So, the only difference I think is the length of the weapon. So, it's more compact. I guess that improves accuracy perhaps. So, yeah, these weapons can be added. And as for uh, grenades, I think they could uh, add the F1 grenade, which was a widely used uh, weapon by the Russian Empire in World War I, I think, and also in World War II. So it continues to be used. And we also have the uh, R RGD-33 grenade. I think this was in COD World at War. So DICE could add this one. But I think, yeah, they should they should add some sort of, you know, new grenade, you know, for the Soviet faction. I don't know what they want to call it, but I think they should. And finally, for melee weapons, um, I, I couldn't really think of much, really. But we have the NR-40, which was a Soviet sort of survival knife used by, actually used by the Soviet army during World War II. So that we could have that one. And uh, I thought of the Shashka, which is basically a Cossack sword used by Cossack horsemen. Now, you know, Cossacks fought in World War II. So I thought adding that might be quite interesting. And the weapons are very beautiful and fantastic looking. So I think, why not? Why not add it? And of course, the I think the, there was a Cossack dagger or something in Battlefield 1. I mean, that could also be brought over as well. Well, uh, I forgot to mention about the uh, medic class, which I will take a look right now. Uh, number one, we have the PPSH-41, which is one of the most iconic weapons of World War II, created by the Soviet Union in 1941. Now, the weapon was designed to give the Soviet infantrymen the firepower they needed, cons considering the devastating defeats they suffered in the Winter War due to Finnish usage of SMGs. Now, around 5 million were produced by 1945 and saw continued production and usage by Soviet allied nations such as China and North Korea. Now, the weapon could hold 35 or 71 round drum magazines and it also had a very high fire rate of 900 rounds per minute. Now, number two, we have the uh, PPS-43. Now, this is a lesser known but also widely used Soviet SMG during World War II. Now, it was created around 1943 to provide a compact weapon with similar accuracy to the PPSH-41, but produced at a lower cost for reconnaissance units and vehicle crews. Now, number three, we have a rare weapon, or SMG, that you may have not, never heard of. It is the Kalashnikov 1942 SMG. Now, this was one of the creations of Mikhail Kalashnikov prior to his most famous creation, the AK-47. Now, while his design was not adopted and was beaten in trials by the PPS-43, it did propel him as a creative and aspiring weapons designer and gained him some fame. Now, this seemed to have held 35 rounds, and I think the weapon itself looks pretty interesting and cool. Now, finally, we have the Spagin PPSH-2. Now this is another Soviet prototype SMG that was beaten by the PPS-43. Now the early designs featured a removable wooden stock, while later versions had a retractable steel shoulder stock. Now the weapon could hold 35 rounds and it had a fire rate of 550 rounds per minute. And the weapon itself oddly looks like an SDG-44, a little bit. So mm, I don't know, maybe they were inspired by that. Now let's move on to the vehicles, okay? The vehicles. Now, there's obviously too many vehicles to choose, but here's my idea for, you know, 
possible vehicles that can be added. For light tanks, I think the T-50 or the T-70 or the BT-7 can be added. All three of these tanks are very fast. And I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a possible choice. Now for medium tanks, I think they could add the very, very famous T-34. Now, of course, there's T-34 model 1940, 41, 42, 43. So I think the option to upgrade your uh, tank should allow you know these types this uh, this modified versions of the original tank to appear now as for as for heavy tanks I think um, mm, I think you could add the I guess IS-2 the IS-2 those were later war tanks and they were very powerful as well now for rocket launchers I think uh, they could add the BM-13 Katyusha which is a very famous <laughs> weapon uh, used by the Soviet Union and basically a multiple rocket launcher 132 millimeters uh, it was also known as Stalin's organ and it was uh, it was quite a scary stuff I think <laughs> now for the armored cars we could have the BA series um, which, which there's quite a few. We have BA-3s, BA-6, and they're basically armored vehicles. Now for AA guns, or I guess AA weapons, we could have the Gaz <laughs> AA or AAA or Gaz MM, or any of these types, which were more of a truck with a machine gun on the back. I also think they should add the KV-2. Which is a very, very, very powerful uh, tank, but I think they could add um, they could add the normal KV-1 and have it be as a heavy tank and being able to modify it and things like that. But have the KV-2 as sort of the Collins, I guess. You know, like you have the Sturmtiger and the Crocodile. I mean, Churchill Crocodile. I think for the Soviets, it should be the KV-2. Now, as for planes, I'm not quite sure. I don't know too much about Russian planes, but I think for fighters, they could add the Yak-3 or the I-16 or something like that. And for attackers, they could definitely and they should definitely add the IL-2, Stro Stromovic. <laughs> now, that is a very good uh, plane to add because there is a lot of different configurations which had, you know, uh, rockets or bombs or high caliber guns and i think it should be very easily customizable i think it's a very good vehicle for customization bombers i do not know much so i can't say and one more final thing that i think should be added for this molotov cocktails yes molotov cocktails we need that stuff in the game anyway that is it for this video sorry for taking your time Thank you very much for watching and if you're interested in more wish lists that I could possibly do, uh, please consider liking this video and please subscribe to show your support. Thank you very much and sayonara!